Okay, that's a lot. I mean, it's not a lot if it's consistently an hour and a half, but it's a lot for just a one-off. It is a lot more beneficial if we spread it a bit, uh, if we distribute it a bit more evenly. For real. Because, you know, 90% of this stuff is muscle memory. A muscle memory doesn't really care for an overdose of information. It's more consistent information. Repetition. Repetition is what's, it's what feeds uh, muscle memory. So, here's the thing. Going back to the idea that we need to, we need to practice, or, or we kind of need to distribute our practice time a little bit more evenly, even if that means to reduce it daily, the daily dose, I'm all good for that. I'm a hundred percent, I'm a big believer of, you know, short sessions. 15 minutes to 20 minutes a day, that's it, call it, wherever you are, you move on, you do it again the next day. But that constant um, recall of information is what makes your body and your brain more and more comfortable. Now, ATP PM seems to be comfortable because last week your body did click into the idea of three notes per drum. In the beginning we were kind of like, oh, this is awkward. It's not. So now we need to find, to make those short sessions as beneficial <coughs> as possible we need to find the sweet spot of practice so i talk about this in my book i have we have three zones of, of mental practice that that usually relates directly to tempo but not necessarily only tempo but you know it's it's the most um obvious factor when it comes to these three zones and i call them zones because it's more of a, a state of mind the first one is the comfort zone cliche right comfort zone everybody talks about it right get out of your comfort zone blah 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 it's not an accident there's more zones the other extreme i call the anxiety zone we also don't want to practice there that's way too fast it's way too much information you're just over processing and then there's the sweet spot which I call the challenge zone. That's where you want to practice. It's not easy. It's not like you can think about dinner while you practice, but it's not causing you so much stress and frustration that you're actually not learning anything. Now, so the big question has to be, how do I find the challenge zone? You need to push the ceiling until it snaps. And that's it. Don't go past that. A lot, believe it or not, it might, might sound silly, and I'll explain you why this happens, by the way. <coughs> but a lot of people tend to practice in the anxiety zone. Now, this leads to two things. A delusion of progress, because they're playing fast, and they look at the click and it's fast. So they have this delusion that they are actually improving, when you listen, but when you listen to it... It's very sloppy. It's very anxious. There's no confidence in the playing. The reason for why that happens, why would anyone do that? One could think. Why, why would you practice in the anxiety zone? The comfort zone makes sense because it makes you f feel nice and cozy inside. But why would anyone do that? Well, because they don't try to push the ceiling f starting from the comfort zone. They just jump in. They dive in and then they hope for the best. And, because, and it's so fast or so much faster than what their challenge zone is. Because, by the way, this is relative to the exercise you're practicing. Some exercises, your comfort zone, my, the comfort zone, right, the lazy one, the useless one, might go all the way up to 150. It depends. And for other exercises, the anxiety zone might start at 70. Who the hell knows? That's why we need to push. We start sl sl silly, slow, right? And then we keep on pushing, pushing, pushing. When it snaps... Bring it down a notch. That's your challenge zone. Uh, so we need to find out, all of this to say, that we need to find out where the ceiling is. For this, for this specific exercise, okay? So that was 80. 80, you were fine. You had a little a couple of moments there, but it was generally okay. Um, I'm trying to think of your body language. Let's try 95. I think still 95 will be reasonable. when it comes to finding the ceiling either your hands give in or your mind gives in and you now right now your hands are mo more than fine 
they are very far away from from peaking speed wise i can see there's no muscular tension but you tensed up up there you start feeling like that's it that's a challenge zone you found it your body's fine can cope so that's not an anxiety zone i didn't start to see you trembling and shaking but um, well no you're laughing but that happens people start their hands are shaking because now there's so much stress that's anxiety right I'm not talking i'm not not talking about chronic anxiety but that is anxiety your adrenaline levels rise and then that's it you can't focus right you get blinded you, you feel like everything your vision goes cloudy and that's it i see that literally every day uh of my week the way to fight which didn't happen but the way to fight that is to bring it down okay so this is clearly the challenge zone so here this zone is not like set uh, not doesn't have one set number we can go down to 105 we can go up to 115 it's a zone not a dot in that timeline so we're gonna have but we gotta stick to this one zone because there, there's stuff, stuff that needs to be needs to become comfortable that's what it is you need to turn and then that's what happens progress is measured by one very simple factor this one's gonna go on my highlights wait progress is measured by w shifting that challenge zone down to comfort zone that's it